Now, let's get to the real, real uh, stories. Today, we want to talk about the economy. And uh, uh, we're very privileged to have with us Ken Gishinga. Ken, Karibu welcome sana. back. Francis, Rana, thank you so much for having me today. It's I always can, a pleasure. I can see you're not working from home. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> What do I, if you're uh, from home, I can't get a suit in my own way. put some pictures on the wall. <laughs> Ken, thank you so much for being here. So what we're going to do, we're going to open the phone lines for the public. Guys, today we're talking about the economy. And not the party to go to 2022. Because any person who wants to become a president or a leader or wants to lead us to anything... The first thing first, I think it's one of the pertinent is how, what are you going to do with the economy? Mm. And uh, Ken, before I open the phone lines, um, as an economist, eh, just give us a temperature check. How is the economy doing? So far. Indeed, uh, it has been fairly subdued mm. because of the current COVID containment issues. Yeah. Um, the hospitality sector has been affected. Mm. Transport has been affected. And uh, we are seeing uh, a lot of businesses um, shutting down. Yeah. In fact, one of the most uh, common requests we are seeing from clients mm -hmm. is people who want to sell off their businesses. Wow. So it's a difficult time, and uh, we hope that uh, that May 28th date uh, will not be extended, yeah. and at least we'll be able to see a full reopening of the economy. But aside from the economy, of course, uh, last time you were here, we spoke about doing, because, you know, this is two terms of Uhuru Kenyatta's mm. government. And uh, we are about to now, of course, you know, all things remaining constant. Uh, we could, we, we're facing another, you know, another leadership, right? Another government, another different thinking. And uh, when we look at Kibaki's government, one thing that he's loaded with is, you know, that he left the economy strong and stable, Right forecasting and looking at 2022 um the, the game after kibaki's government was always uh you know other things that were not necessary economy wasn't at the heart of it mm. why will economy be at the heart of elections in 2022 indeed one thing that i've said for quite a long time is uh, far too often our politics have been dominated by tribal uh, backgrounds but 2022 will possibly be the first election year where we'll have something extra, and that extra will be the economy. And uh, the economy has affected um, every sector, every player. What I will call for during the call of this show mm -hmm. is a sense of balance. Yeah. What we need is balance. And I'll talk a bit about that as we get a bit deeper. What we have right now in Kenya is imbalance. Mm -hmm where we are heavy on one part of the economy and very light on another part of the economy. And I'll give the analogy of a table mm -hmm. which has four legs. If one of those legs or two of those legs are short, mm -hmm. then you'll find the table becomes very unstable. Yeah. And that's what we have in Kenya. That lack of balance is creating instability. So I think uh, one of the things that Kibaki had the insight of was to have that sense of balance between what we call fiscal policy and monetary policy. Mm -hmm. And I'll talk a bit about that. And I'll talk about the factors of production. Mm -hmm. These are the things, the building blocks of an economy. And the key message I'll tell your viewers today is all the four factors of production have to be nurtured and cultivated for us to have a balanced economy. So balance will be at the center of my message today. All right. All right, so guys, phone lines are open 0719-012700. Leo, kuna swali tunauliza. Wewe, ukiangalia 2022, kusabu unajua it boils down to you. Wendo kusema, wendo, wendo bazu, wendo boss. Wendo kusema mwenye ataingia uko na kenya unataka adu. Ukiangalia sai, kwa sabu 2022, tutakuwa tunongia jo economy pia. Mambu ya tribalism, tumesema hiyo tumeacha 2016. Mm. In 2022, Ukiangalia ama players wote nyoko in politics right now. Because umwenye atakuwa president atatuka tu kwa hiyo crop. Yeah. Nani ndi unaona uneza mpatia kifungu muambie economy na tika unifixi economy. Mm. Call us up right now. 0719-012700. And just take it a bit, a step further and tell us why. Why do you believe in this person? Mm. It could be anyone, no judgment. Remember, it's a court of public opinion. And all opinions expressed here are individual views. Stallone. Yeah. Mambo. One, one. Yeah, Mimi na Kali President. Mm -hmm. 
Mine za Twitter na Fred Motwa. Mhm. Ju tunaona venye kaunti yake venye imeendelea. Fred, huyo ni huyo ni kaunti gani? Machako sa Fred Motwa. Oh, oh Alfred Mutua. Stalon na sibio tena very different. <laughs> Alfred Mutua, okay. I'm a summer attendant at Alfred Mutua because of what he's done in his nini. But he didn't yeah. explain because I did explain. I'm a summer too, Yanni. Um, Alfred Mutua. Patrick Kadere, good morning. Yes, 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 sir. Karibu sana, Patrick. Nini naona kama election in Ezra Kuja 22 kama nitakuwa high. Number four, kuwa kwa balo, nini nitakuwa Mutua. Mutua, Alfred. Wow. Alfred Mutua, huyu Mutua mimi naona hata ambulance huko alisema ni bora ulipi na huko tuanzoe you must pay 7k hapo ndio kikubebu na sikia. Na hapo naona anabebea watu free kabisa, free sio kulipa. Na anafuta dela kwa mnyamitaji kitu. Sasa mimi napea yangu. All right. Patrick Adere there from Kitale saying wow. Alfred Mutua and and, and can, I don't know if you can hear us. Um the point that uh, Patrick has mentioned um why we're giving the the listeners a chance to speak because at the end of the day you know we we as uh, uh, as the electorate mm. we don't have enough civic education to uh, to help us understand you know what what some of these manifestos are when they say they're going to help the economy we 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 see the headline but we don't really chambua so we're giving the listeners a chance to help us see it from their perspective you can hear someone is saying alfred mutua because he gave us access to healthcare mm. right and and you you're, you're going to speak about all this i hope you're writing your notes so let's go to the phone lines again hello Piti, tunongena nani? Raskoplo hapa nimerudisha na Mombasani. Karibu sana. Changamka, unasema leo wewe 2022 nani unapatia Afix Economy? Nini nini unaona leo mtu huyu mtu? Wow. Umtu 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 wako poa. Hao wengine wote mimi naona ni mafisi. Hao wengine wote ni mafisi. Thank you so much. Mtu anaweza. Mtu anaweza. Again, we're getting Mutua, and these are from all, all, all parts of the country. Yeah, that's Let's go to Stala. Mackenzie. Hello, morning, man. Morning. Hello, Kambos. Wagwan, karibu sana. Hapo uh, kwa mjani na mina sema hivi Kambos. Aha. I mean about ya Mutua. Who? Umesama na Mutua nani? Na wangu kutoka kita. Kwa hanta mkengie. Mhm. Right, Mackenzie, let me let me let me dig just a bit deeper. I mean, I mean, Jakarta. All right. Mutua, right? You said Mutua. Okay. Oti. Yes, Kambo. Wagua, niko fiti? Niko fiti dadangu, niambie. Sisi tuko fresh hapa kwa studio mazi. Hapo likoni sasa, angalia economy hey. na vinyo inafanyika 2022. Ni nani unatrust at affix economy? Mimi 2022 ni kiangalia upande wangu. Mhm. Ah mimi naona Rao Rao hapo yuko chonja kabisa huyo Buda. Rao mm. ata fix economy. Mm. Eh. Yeah. Why yeah. why mbona Rao? Rao kiangalia hata ile solution yake ni nchi za nje kama vile labda Europe eh. Yeah. Mm. Mta anaweza hata anaweza aka 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 nini akaleta my investors waka invest huku. So he has a network. No. Eh yeah, ana network nzuri kabisa. Alafu tena ukiangalia unajua ni mtu pia kidogo ni mzee alafu pia ana an, 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 ile uchoyo sana ya kunyakua ushaona. Mm. Eh lakini ukiweka vijana kijana kidogo sasa wana 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 ile moyo ya kunyakwa nyakwa lakini ule mzai kidogo ametolea sasa mimi pande wangu naona mzai yuko sawa Hey Oti thank you so much lakini pia eh. wazee wanaiba pia eh mimi sijaona hii hii corruption na ikuangi na discrimination ya age mm. age age mm. limit Bado amesema Rao you know Rao Nimeona watu wakiiba hata in their 80s Rao jina yake ni safi lakini you know he has a point <laughs> Mr community Eh hey, kombok Wagwan Greetings, greetings. Greetings, greetings. Welcome to the conversation. Ah, mimi na furaha kusikia tu watu wakisema huko. Wewe za vote nani manze? Asort out economy yetu vile na struggle. We just have only one man manze. Sasa hizi ukiangalia strategy zake, eh. Zimesimama tu venye ziko. Aha. If you look to a person motivated that to Ruto hapo Mr. William Ruto. Right. Uh-huh. Akona strategies nyingi sana zenye zinasaidia economy. Mm. Yeah. Zenye zinasaidia kila mtu if you look like kama zenye kama akona importer yapo. Mhm. Unaona akona kama 3 million plus hapo. Lakini ukiangalia the cost of the mayai kama zenye nauza. Mhm the day ni cheap so unaangalia unaona kama huyo anasaidia economy sana like anauza hii kama it bob easy 
All right. Thank okay. you so much, Mr. Community. We got to let you go. Yeah. We're going to stop the calls there. We've gotten a, a bit of a taste of what people are saying. Now, we're going to let Ken Gishinga break it down to us. I'm sure you've heard a few of the things that people have to say. Let's take a musical break. When we come back, we get into it. Remember, guys, the show is... Natuko kwa mjadala, koto public opinion, leo tunauliza, economy, how is it doing? Mm. Who's going to get us in 2022? Who would you give this uh, position? But now we've heard from people. Now let's hear from the economist on what we should be looking for. Mm. Vibes Radio. All right, let's get into it. Of course, uh, we're still talking about the economy. And uh, we are, before the break, yeah. we had heard from the public on uh, what they think or who will lead us into, you know, that economic balance, right. stability, mm. which is the, the canon that we're all looking for. Ken, from what you had, jump in. What, what do you think? Yeah, um, the same. Mutua will fix the economy. Yes. I mean, but is, is, yeah. this, is this a somebody thing or <laughs> it's a structure thing? Yeah. What are some of those things that whoever comes into power uh, 2022 in terms of fixing the economy should look at? Mm. It's very much a structure thing. And I think you're absolutely spot on to that. And uh, many thanks for your listeners for very good contributions. And indeed, all the politicians today are talking about the economy. And they're saying they'll grow the economy. We hear about uh, bottoms up, mm -hmm. we hear top down, mm -hmm. we hear we have so many things. But unfortunately, none of those is grounded in actual economics. Mm -hmm. Because a serious candidate who's talking about growing the economy has to talk about the four factors of production. Mm -hmm. The first factor of production is land. The second factor of production is labor. Mm -hmm. The third factor of production is capital. And the last one is entrepreneurship. So a serious candidate with an economic agenda in his manifesto or economic policy has to break it down into the four factors of production. And, and this is what I say. These are the four legs of the table mm -hmm. that keep it stable. So when you come to land, a serious candidate has to ask, why do we have so much idle land in Kenya, mm. yet we are importing food from Tanzania, we are importing food from Uganda, we are becoming a net importer of food, mm. Well, you have a lot of fertile land that is idle in Kenya. In fact, if you look at our culture of just land speculation, mm. we built the culture of buy that land and sit on it, and speculate on it until it appreciates. Yeah, yeah. So we have so much land in Kenya. If you go to many parts of this country, that is just idle, mm. waiting for people to speculate. Yeah. And that is land that could be put to good use in terms of farming and feeding farming and feeding Kenyans. The second uh, factor of production is labor. Yeah. If you just go to the central business district here, mm -hmm. you'll find so many unemployed young people. Yeah. Yeah. They'll be sitting at Jivanji Gardens. They'll mm. be sitting, walking all over town. Mm. And a serious candidate has to ask, how do we get these young people? And I'm going to use the example of agriculture here because yeah. it's something everybody can identify with, yeah. mm -hmm. but it applies to every sector of the economy. Mm. So a serious candidate has to go to his county and say, all these young people, yet we have so much idle land. Can't we surely put these young people in places where there's this idle land mm -hmm. and to be able to produce. Yeah. The third part is capital, because you can't do anything without capital. And in agriculture, capital is things like tractors, um, seedlings, um, fertilizers. So a serious candidate should be able to say, we've identified areas where there's idle land. Mm -hmm. We've identified young people who have an interest in agribusiness. Mm -hmm. Now we just need a bit of tractors, a bit of genders, um, seedlings, fertilizers. Yeah. He should be able now to organize those, or at least facilitate them in a way that's easy. Yeah. Then now you have people now actually cultivating the land and producing things. Then that brings in the last person, which is the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. This is the person who sees all these things together. He sees the land, the labor, the capital. 
and says, I think in this place we have a lot of dairy farming, we have a lot of dairy industry. So instead of just uh, selling milk like that, mm -hmm. can we possibly start a yogurt factory yeah. and be able to absorb some of those younger people mm -hmm. to do what is called value addition? And besides selling milk, we'll sell yogurt and cheese and butter and such things. Now, it's an entrepreneur who can see those things. So for me, unfortunately, none of the candidates who have forwarded their name right now is speaking critically along those lines. Yeah. And that's what gets very worried because we're going to get into the whole thing of um, what for me will grow the economy, yeah. but we don't get the specifics. So these are the specifics that your voters need to ask uh, the president, the mm. governors, you know, what is your agenda on all these four factors of production? Mm. That's very interesting. Now, let's, let's, let's look at, uh, you know, we lived in one, in one presidency. I'm going to start with Moise, uh, Moise, because uh, he, he, he inherited from Jomo Kenyatta the culture of, you know, let people farm, let people mm. work. Mm. But was there, you know, was this, you know, like if you're talking about land, there was a lot of idle land in that time. If you're talking exactly. about, when you're talking about capital, a lot of uh, businesses were not, it was not a favorable place to do business. But then that was, is that, that was the difference in, uh, uh, um, Kibaki's government, where a lot of businesses were running into the country because the economy was good. It was a it was a, a good, good environment, place to do, a good environment, environment to do business. Yeah. But in Uhuru Kenyatta's government, something opposite is happening. A lot of people are looking at it as an unfavorable place to do business. So, with that said, what are some of those low hanging fruits? Yeah. Someone who's getting into 2022 can start sealing because mm. if it's if you're talking about uh, and I feel like in Huru Kenyatta's government, uh, there's been a lot of focus on the labor yeah. aspect of it, yeah. Um, uh, you know, and the, and the entrepreneurship, okay, entrepreneurship. So, mm. trying to make sure that people are able to get loans and work and mm. you know, and, and start entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship. I don't know how effective it's been, yeah. and then you also have labor, which is let's get you know, NYS, let's give these guys jobs. But how effective has it been? So looking at the low-hanging fruits that are there, not to get too technical, but someone who's getting in, what, when they start telling us their manifesto, what should we be hearing, right, in terms of fixing what is already currently ongoing? So hold that thought. We've got to pay some bills. And when we come back, we're going to be speaking about this. Guys, remember, if you've got any questions, remember to use the hashtag. Kombox and Kev. Vibes Radio. Ken Gishinga, karibu sana. Ken, welcome back, Again Ken. and again. So now, low-hanging fruits. Yeah. We're talking about the economy on Mjadala. Mm. And uh, for, the, for, the, for the electorate, you know, what will be low-hanging fruits? Because, you know, these guys, they'll come with colorful... Color, mm. sh, before you know it, we're in another, you know, when mm. we're in another t 10 years of, of yeah. leadership and we, we have no idea what these people uh, promised us. So what are those key things? Like if there's a, 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 someone who wants to get into leadership mm. or someone who will be... What are those low-hanging fruits for economy that they must address? Many thanks. Um, the low-hanging fruit has to be of the last factor of production called entrepreneur, mm -hmm. because this is where all your business people are. Mm -hmm. You remember last week, the Kitengela Bar Owners Association went to court um, to argue that the 1% minimum tax mm -hmm is going to threaten their business yeah and this is a challenge that a lot of business people have that mm -hmm. there are too many taxes yeah. needed mm -hmm. for you to open a restaurant sometimes you need an upward of almost 16 licenses Imagine. to Crazy. be able to operate uh, the business yeah. and a lot of taxes so i think the low hanging fruit is to really remove the barriers to enterprise yeah. uh, remove some of these things like the one percent minimum tax mm -hmm remove uh, things such as um, too much licensing, mm -hmm. try and consolidate things into maybe a single permit, mm -hmm. a single license, and simplify because entrepreneurs only thrive when they have freedom yeah. to be able to express their creativity, to buy and sell. Mm -hmm. But in Kenya, you really feel if you wanted to run a small factory and manufacture maybe yogurt, yeah. Yeah. you'd have... So many licenses mm -hmm. until at some point you'd be like, what's the point of doing this? Yeah. So I think that's the number one low-hanging fruit, removing the number of taxes and the, the number of licenses needed mm -hmm. to do business. Mm 
So, Kent, just to add on that, I've got a question, yeah? So, you're talking about, for example, uh, elevating that entrepreneurship space, which I believe is the last beacon of hope for young Kenyans. However, how is that possible when uh, uh, word is, and uh, in fact, when we talk to some people who are entrepreneurs and people who are in the, also some economists, when I say, Kenya lacks skilled um, young people who can even you know, do, like, can thrive in the, for example, in entrepreneurship, for example. So, I mean, how does the new president, you know, the guys who are going to come in for the new regime, how are they going to help, you know, improve on this skill-based economy that Kenya really needs? Yeah, I think, they, I think asking also that if, yes, the labor being one of the factors of production, is it something that someone has to look at financing? Because yeah. in this government, what we've seen is, uh, from, from from my experience, what I've seen is the youth have been wamepatu makazi, Tudogo, tudogo, tudogo. Kazi iko, lakini skills akuna, for example. Ziko, mi na yeah? skills ziko. <laughs> but what should that president do to yeah. be able to, to help us? Mm. Well, there are two parts to that question. The first part is there are already mm. amazing innovators out here. Only a few weeks ago, you remember you were interviewing the likes of Mike and Wowzy. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. that's a fantastic a platform that is creating jobs yeah. for Kenyans all across Kenya. Yeah. So already we have these innovators and we need to encourage them. If you go to countries like Israel or the US, mm. they really value these innovators, the Henry Ford, the Bill Gates, mm. because these are the people who bring it together. Now, on the part of expanding more skills, mm -hmm. that speaks to the education system. Yeah. We need to ask ourselves, and most of us went through the 844 system, yeah. which had its uh, pros and cons. Mm. And I know now they have moved towards the competency-based curriculum, yeah. and we need to see how it will perform. But ultimately, it's about cultivating skills mm. that people can use in the marketplace. I remember reading about some young men who graduated from university and couldn't find a job, and they went to a local college nearby, and they took some um, mixologist course for about two months, mm. And they started their own mixology business. Mm. And I hear that they are booked every weekend. Mm. Wow. So that ability to reskill. And actually, when you look at the U.S., we talk a lot about the big universities. Yeah. But it's really these small community colleges where if, for example, you lose your job, yeah. you can go and in about two months, you're a software programmer. Mm. In about two months, you have learned some hospitality skills. Yeah. These small skills are the ones that help people retool, mm. reskill, mm. and uh, be able to... And that's why the U.S. has a very vibrant labor market. Yeah. But if you lose your job, maybe you're a receptionist somewhere, you could go somewhere, learn a couple of skills on uh, maybe social media marketing, mm. and be able to get a, start a career as a social media. So we need a curriculum that is very dynamic, that allows people to quickly retool and quickly reskill. All right. So for those who are listening in right now, you know, remember at the end of the day, we're talking about 2022, uh, you know, politics. And, and, and I got to ask Ken, um, I, I saw, you know, Musalia has come out talking about his, you know, economic strategy. And he has a background of being in charge of the finance ministry uh, uh, in his tenure. And then you have the deputy president. Very interesting. Very interesting times, you know, getting uh, the economists who Kibaki used in his tenure to come up with, a with an economic strategy. Is, is that the way forward? You know, uh, is, when you look at Musalia speaking about his plan, when you look at Ruto realizing that, okay, things are bad, you know, and planning for 2022, let me get econom economists to the table. Uh, but you're saying that their economic plans don't sound, you know, like an, an economist. So is the solution to actually have a team of economists on the, on the job? It's very important to get specific. And I think what Kenyans right now are tired of just being told that the candidate will grow the economy. Kenyans want to know specific. the specifics. Yeah. And that's what, when you look at the American election, mm -hmm. that's what people talk about specifics. When Bill Clinton wrote to presidency, his slogan was, it's about jobs. So we need to people, our uh, candidates, to say it's about jobs. So maybe uh, the likes of the leaders you've mentioned mm -hmm. can be able to say in their plan, yeah. I think maybe Mombasa, the blue economy, mm. is an area that we can really utilize mm. and make it like Japan. Japan yeah. has a blue economy that is producing billions yeah. worth of revenue. Mm. 
So we are, we are thinking of starting a training college in Mombasa that can be able to skill people on the blue economy mm. or partner with one of the universities. So for me, Kenyans need to be rigorous this time. Mm. It can't be about we're just going to connect you to power and such things. Because yeah. so that's been rehashed so many times. Yeah. Any Anybody can connect people to power. And it has to be, you want to invest in this. Where are you going to raise the taxes? Yeah. Are you going to raise the taxes by uh, hurting businesses? Mm. Or are you going to find other innovative ways of raising? And that's one area they never tell you. Almost every candidate tells you how they'll spend the money, yeah. but they never tell you how will they raise the money. Mm. And sometimes the way they'll raise the money is by putting like this 1% minimum tax mm. that really ends up now making your situation even worse. So people should be asking, yes, you want to do these amazing things, but how are you going to raise the revenue? Are you going to add more tax? Are you going to be borrowing from the IMF? Are you going to... It has to be very clear so mm. that the people can know, yes, we are signing up for this. Yes. And, and, and is this even down to the counties? Yeah. Yes, indeed. You know, counties have something called the own source revenue, yeah. which they have not really been raising. And that's why you see them fighting at the national level for the national side, because they have not been able to raise their own revenue. Yeah, yeah. So even the governors need to say, I'm the governor of Nairobi. We are going to be raising this much from parking fees. Mm. We are going to be raising this much from uh, all these fees we pay in Nairobi. Yeah. And that amount will be going to these different words. It will go to maybe State House Girls Nairobi mm. or Olympic Primary School. That's the kind of specifics yeah. that the electorate now needs to be asking for. Else you'll just get very generic statements. That's true. You'll get manifestos where things are being copy-pasted from abroad and have no, do, do not make sense. Mm. And also, uh, there's an interview I saw with... Uh, CS or Honorable Dababu Namwamba when he was in the United States. He was in Washington and he held talks with the president and uh, CEO of the Corporate Council of Africa, a lady called Miss Flor Fl uh, Laser, basically, Miss Laser. Now, Likona Sema, the Big Four agenda has uh, this strategy, this development strategy that the president has, is, uh, has made the country on an upward trajectory. And it obviously, uh, it includes uh, manufacturing, affordable housing, universal health care, and food security. Not forgetting, we also have the Vision 2030. Is it true that the country is on a positive trajectory? And if so, uh, what does it mean for the, for the, for the next regime? Yeah? Yeah. Does it mean they have to further this same strategy? Should they continue with it? Or um, uh, they should just you know, flip the... Flip the coin, probably come up with a new strategy. Vision 2060. <laughs> Vision 2060 or something. The challenge with those two strategies is they are spending strategies. They tell you, we'll put your money to this particular project. Mm. What they do not tell you is how they will raise that money. Mm. Borrow, and borrow, so borrow. We believe it was more about borrowing. And sometimes we start borrowing very excessively mm. to the point where you say even Kenyans are going to IMF. Yeah. One of the things that uh, Kibaki tried to do was to make sure that the country is running on its own taxes. Mm. Um, so what uh, the big tax payers are paying is what is being plowed back into the economy. The problem of debt-financed growth, which is what we currently have, yeah. is sometimes the projects don't pay off immediately, mm. but the creditors need their money ASAP. Yeah. They have a schedule of how they want to be paid. Yeah. And that's the challenge of it. So you always end up now borrowing more. If we can go back to the model where we are raising money from our taxes, and not taxes that um, overwhelm Kenyans, mm -hmm. but a balanced tax philosophy that is broad-based, yeah. so nobody really feels that they are weighted. Right now you feel it's only business people who are paying taxes, or things like VAT. Mm. And stuff. Remember yesterday, last week you saw that cost of cooking gas going up yeah. because yeah, the yeah. went up from 8% to 16%. Yeah. So what we and your listeners have to ask their electorate is, thank you, sir, for this wonderful plan. Yeah. Mm. How are we going to fund this? That's because true. if we can't fund it from our taxes, if you're just going to be borrowing, yeah. we're going to be digging ourselves into a deeper hole. Oh. 
All right, Ken, thank you so much as usual. Can Remember, uh, Ken, you're part of my panel. We are <laughs> definitely going to, we are going to chambua those uh, manifestos. Yeah. This time there's no playing, man. We want to see where the truth actually lies. And, and uh, you know, looking at Biden, he spoke 100 years. It has been an action-packed 100, 100 days, days, you know, yeah. so... Um, we are we are wishing the same for Kenya. Thank you so much, Ken Gishinga, and uh, have a fabulous morning. A few takeaways from that conversation. Mm. One, we need to be you know ask deeper questions, mm. right? Um, and then number two, I'm saying, which is the key? I think it should be even number one, which is. Thank you so much for this beautiful plan. Mm. <laughs> how are we going to? How will this be? Exactly. Man? And you know what he said? Yeah. He said that. All these manifestos that we get, most of the time they tell you how they are going to spend your money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't tell you how they are going to be able to make money. Mm, yeah. So what can you do to be It has to have a trickle down effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come yeah. on, come on, come on, And that's where we wanted to talk about the economy because I know for a fact, and you can see it, mm. 2022 economy will be at the center. It has to because be. to, we've gotten a panel beating from COVID, and then you're getting into you know we're still in the pandemic. Things have not been so good, and then now getting into an election year. So after that, what is it going to look like? As Jeff Kennedy said. It's the economy, stupid. Vibes Radio, we rule the nation in this generation.